everyone and welcome back to another Unity 3D tutorial. In this one I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use a vertex painter. Now I'm rather new to vertex painting and I didn't really know about it before until I actually asked about it. But vertex painting is pretty much a way to paint onto an object similar to what you would do on terrain. So if you created a terrain and you started painting on it you can blend in different textures and do stuff like that. Now Unity does not have a built-in tool for this to actually paint onto an object itself and that's something I've been looking for. If you have a very large scale model and you unwrap it, most of the time you're not going to be able to get those little tiny details that you want in each section. Or if you're just using basic tile maps where you just throw a texture, one simple plain texture onto an object and tile it, sometimes you want to add little details with not having a gigantic texture itself. So this way we can add little details without having to do any of that complex stuff. So in bigger game titles, when they have these larger environments, most of the time I'm guessing they use vertex painting to add all the little details that they want. It just makes things a lot easier. Uh, the best way to explain is if you have a giant terrain texture, like we have with terrain, and you want to paint all the little details in it, it's not going to be accomplished in Photoshop just because after you do the tile texture it's hard to lay out the different paths and stuff any other details you want to add to it it's just not going to work in Photoshop it's going to get blurred out and stretched out and it's not going to look good so we want something to be able to add detail to make our object actually look good with this painting so the first thing that we're going to do you want to make sure that you have a mesh collider on your object so physics mesh collider and you want to make sure your objects are all attached when you do this all one object or else it's not going to work too well. Now I'm going to be changing this up. We're going to have to change this to Pixel Studio Vertex Blend. First I should probably show you guys where to get this asset. So we'll just open up the asset store. And we'll go type in the search Vertex Painter. And there's a few other ones that you can actually pay for, but right now I'm just using the free one, Simple Vertex Painter. It allows you to paint up to four textures on one object and blend them all in and whatnot. So just hit Download and Import. I've already imported mine, and so that's all you need. So yeah, just set up the, the collision type, and then go ahead and change this to Vertex. Vertex Blend. Okay, now that we're in here, we have different settings in here, and you can change the shininess, you can adjust the values and whatnot. And then we have for each one a spec, which is just the base texture, and bump. And we have this for each one of the textures since we can use up to four. So what we're going to do is, we're not going to worry about the bump for right now. We're just going to drag and drop random textures that we can actually use. And this is just for explaining it's probably not going to look great at all but it's just going to give you an idea on how to set this stuff up so now what we're going to do is open up window and vertex paint so we'll hit red generate vertex and set all to chosen color so you can set it to whatever you want it's going to display that first one if we click on green and set we can cycle through each one of these different colors and it places it right on there and it actually looks pretty neat. Actually, it looks really nice right now. So, what we can do is let's say we want to add some more detail to this. So, we can change it to a different one. We can change the radius if we want for, you know, how much is actually painted. We'll set this a little low and then blend. So, it goes from 0 0.1 to 1. It's how much you want to paint or how much you want to blend in. So, we'll crank this up just a little bit and we want to start painting onto here. Let's see. We actually have to click on paint to get it to work. And see that blends it in way too much. So we'll change that back to red. We'll change the radius very low here and we'll change the blend very low as well. It's different with every type of model. And as you can see here, I have some bl grass blended into my other texture. Now I can choose this one. 
I guess there's an error with being able to move textures around as well. And then I can paint onto here with this. You can jump back and forth and paint whatever you want. I think because this is the, okay, maybe uh, right clicking is a lot easier and it won't move around your object by accident. So as you can see here, all the other ones are changing too because this is the same one. But you can pretty much switch through and you can change all this, change the blend, blend it in slowly if you want to be however you want it to look. So we can change it all back too if we wanted. And yeah, it's a pretty basic tool. And then you can click stop and it'll go back to normal. And we'll click off of this. And now we can see that we have a few different details from some of those different textures. And so you can see how useful this tool can be, especially if we have buildings like this over here. If I made this all brick, and I want to add maybe grass here, um, moss over here, some vines, give a little bit of detail. You can do it with this tool. Now, like I said before, there's more complex shader tools out there. So you could have actually different effects going on. So you could have flowing water in a certain direction down your objects. And you can give a bunch of little detail to all that. So hopefully you guys can use these tools and create something really cool.